I don't know much about 3D scanners. Is this one gonna be simple enough for me? Today we've got an opportunity to look at another 3D scanner from a company called Gracket. Gratkit? Gracket. Gracket. Now I'm not familiar with this company, but they've got filament, resins, dryers, and apparently a 3D scanner now. They just finished their Kickstarter, so you can check the link below if you're interested. So today we're gonna test it out. I'm gonna start by unboxing it and walking through some of the materials it can scan, and then we'll throw it together and see what it takes to set it up. Finally, we're gonna scan some stuff around my workspace in an effort to see if this scanner or 3D scanners in general are accessible enough for regular people like you or I to use in projects. When I say regular people, I'm talking about people of average intelligence. Perhaps that's better said, people that aren't necessarily super geniuses. I'll let you determine what level of intelligence I possess in the comments section, especially after you see how much I struggle with this. The unboxing process on this thing is super smooth, and I've gotta say, I'm becoming more excited as I press on investigating this scanner. I don't have much experience with 3D scanners. Actually, I've got no experience outside of that Creality Otter Light that I reviewed a few weeks back. That one's good and all, but as I'm releasing this one from its packaging, I'm impressed. I don't know if I had low expectations, but this box immediately presents like a very quality product. Kind of feels like the IBUS X Tetris unboxing just a little bit. Although this one's quite a bit more expensive at $999. Everything's packaged well to withstand the persistent attacks of the shipping companies delivering these boxes. And the instructions, that I actually read this time for some reason, are very clear and helpful. We've got a calibration plate deal here used to sight in the machine as well as these little registration dots. There's a black mat that can be used to help the scanner differentiate between the object and the background. And that brings up a good point that I'm gonna cover in just a little bit. But before we get there, we need to remove the scanner itself this test scan bus, the scanner handle, and this top piece of foam. The remaining contents of the box gets us everything we still need to begin using this scanner. These are the metal frame pieces along with the turntable and some power cords. The main power cable splits off allowing for power and data transfer to happen on one input. And there's a cable that connects the turntable to the handheld unit. The kit includes a power adapter for the USB-C and this little kickstand for propping up the subjects being scanned. Overall, it seems very approachable for a 3D scanning newbie like myself. But before we stick all this together and start scanning, let's learn what kind of objects can this one actually scan. So this scanner is a DLP scanner, which is DLP Stripe Structured Light Scanner. I'm not sure what that means and I don't really care to learn what that means, but you should probably know that that's what it is. Perhaps I don't have the capacity to learn. Average intelligence, you know. But the rundown I've been given is simple. This tech allows for high density point clouds to be captured faster, while maintaining a much lower load on your computer's GPU. This is another reason why I like having it on the channel, even if you've got a weak laptop or whatever, you should still see decent performance. Although the thing is $999, so I don't know. This isn't reserved for super mega professionals that have dedicated scanning setups or whatever. A regular person with a regular computer can handle this. I don't even have an RGB keyboard. But the point I'm trying to arrive at is this scanner's got many of the same drawbacks that a lot of other scanners have, and it's important that we highlight those. First off, the price. I've mentioned it already, but $999 is kind of a mid-range scanner, as I understand it. For me personally, I don't have a specific use, so that seems expensive. For you, you may have a specific repeatable use for a 3D scanner. This may be a good deal for you. Maybe it is a good price. You decide. But the main scanner drawbacks we see from this device have to do with light. You can't scan black objects because they absorb the light too well. And you can't scan super reflective objects because they reflect the light too well. Both cases lead to the returned light data being incomplete or unusable for the scan. So the black background matte thing we were talking about earlier, that becomes especially useful for handheld scanning probably due to its color. I would imagine the same is true for the turntable and the kickstand. Otherwise, if you need to scan something super reflective, there's sprays available to make the object scannable. And if you have objects that are translucent or extremely dark, they'd likely benefit from that same treatment if you're needing a high level of accuracy. And if you're somebody looking for a scanner but you're not looking for a high level of accuracy, what are you doing? Actually comment below if that's you. You use a scanner because you don't want a high level of accuracy. And me or Paul will respond to you. I don't know what we're gonna say, but we'll respond to you. Now before we get to scanning, we need to calibrate this pig. 
And in order to do that, we need a little bit of setup happening. Now, the thing I was excited about when this review was proposed was the turntable feature. I know some scanners are strictly handheld, and this one, including a powered turntable, is cool. Partly because I'm shaky, and I can't hold things still. I'm actually pretty still right now. Let me fix that. But importantly, when scanning small objects, the accuracy of a mounted system like this can't really be matched when simply holding it. That said, this can be used as a handheld unit for larger objects, up to 200 millimeters cubed. But for me, I want to focus on some smaller stuff as well. That uses the desktop mode, which is anything less than 50 millimeters cubed. The setup to get the scanner unit and the turntable unit on speaking terms is unsurprisingly simple. And the process here keeps leading me to find myself impressed with the quality of everything. The materials are solid and feel beefy, the metal frame pieces here fit together with great precision, and this speaks to the level of attention to detail that I've seen up until this point. For example, all the screws are captive and in place already. No need to open a million different baggies, no dropping screws because you have shaky hands. They're all in place, you just tighten them up when you're ready. Amazing. But the attention to detail doesn't stop there. The length of this USB cable connecting the scanner to the turntable, for example, it's exactly the correct length. It fits through this hole in the base, it sits securely into this cable management channel on the underside of the frame, and it comes up the back of the scanner at exactly the correct length. Again, I'm not sure if my standards are just super low or if I've been hurt too many times in the past by old Creality printers, but these seemingly simple things are refreshing to see in a world full of plastic rushed products. You know, stuff built for one-time use, engineered to rush out the door and sell units instead of serving a customer, those kinds of things. Goodness, I feel like I get more and more ranty as I age. Comment below if you want to rant about something, but you don't have a YouTube channel where you can rant. Doesn't matter what it is, just have a rant. Paul and I are going to respond. Anyway, my point is the level of care and intentionality has me exceptionally impressed. So if you're impressed with this content and you want to support us by spending two bucks a month on our Patreon, check the link below. Boom, just like that, I've called your action and only disrupted your video for five seconds. That was so quick you didn't even need to skip ahead 10 seconds. That's pretty good. So for scanning, I wanted to start small. First, for desktop mode, I thought it'd be fun to scan one of my tiny printed nachos. Then I could print the scanned print, even though I already have the STL. Hmm. This is pointless, but I've always wanted to scan a printed piece to see what would happen. Something to note about this scanner is the fact that it was made specifically using FDA certified projection light, I guess. I'm not sure how dangerous scanners can be for your eyeball health. But it was a specific development point for Gracket, so I thought I'd mention it. In addition to that, the scanner and software does some intelligent background removal stuff, so this should be a pretty simple process for a normal person such as myself. And after performing some scans, I wouldn't say it was the most simple process, but it wasn't that difficult either. The scanning part was by far the easiest. I just put the model there and clicked the auto function inside of the software to balance brightness and color and stuff. From there, the software allows you to clean up the model a bit until you've got a more refined model to export. One thing I did learn firsthand from scanning this model, though, is how difficult it is to get the dark colors to come through. I read it in the instructions, I just didn't listen. Also, I ended up putting Nacho up on a coin here so the scanner could get all the information on his little feet. It seems to scale the scan area to the total object size, so adding something here helped a little bit in the margins. After that, I did a few different scans to push the limits of the machine a little bit. I learned that the desktop mode is only for small objects, which again is exactly what the instructions said. Also, I reinforced that I should not be scanning things that are super dark, reflective, or transparent at all. This isn't learning. This is information that's readily available. I don't know why, I don't know why I try this stuff. I should know better. So it was good to do this to mess around with it on my own a little bit while I learned how to use the scanner and the program. And with that testing under my belt, I could move on to something that I legitimately needed to scan. My buddy's got this sick old van and the dash vent here is totally crumbly and cooked. So I gave it a scan. The scanner works well enough in handheld mode as long as you're smooth enough. I'm generally not smooth. But if you get your object scanned pretty well and then suddenly lose tracking, there's a rollback feature that I used quite a bit to get this scan. This is great reference information for this piece, but it's going to require some modeling after the fact still. The piece I'm scanning is warped pretty bad, and it's meant to be flat. Without the scanner, though, I would not be able to make this part. It's super crumbly, so handling it to measure it and stuff is just not an option. If I look at it wrong, pieces of it fall off. 
So now I've captured enough data to get this thing running off, and I didn't even need to take like a master class or anything, I just had to mess around with the scanner for an hour or so, and unfortunately read some instructions. I don't know, I'd say that's pretty good. So with some scans under my belt, let's talk about my first impressions. Again, I don't have loads of scanning experience, and I was given this product for free, so be aware of those conditions as you ingest my review. But I'm sure you can already tell I'm pretty impressed. The quality of the hardware especially has kind of tainted my perception of any other piece of the process here. But the software suite integrates extremely well with the hardware. Though this isn't a portable scanner using an app or anything like that, it's clear that a lot of work went into making this a simple, usable desktop experience. The computer bit does require a little bit of learning, and I think it's more optimized for Windows. If I scroll too fast, the model absolutely flies away into oblivion, and then I can't get it back. But overall, as a package, this is pretty good. I would say the desktop mode is going to be the main benefit for this piece of kit. It's kind of difficult to scan stuff that's a little bit bigger when you're plugged into the computer, you're plugged into power, and you got cords going everywhere. But using the turntable for small stuff works very, very well. Anyway, you've seen me bumble around with this thing, so you be the judge. Can a beginner really use this scanner? Thanks to Gracket for sending this scanner over. It's been fun learning more about 3D scanning and playing around with this device. Again, Gracket just finished their Kickstarter for this thing, so if you want to check that out, there's a link below. Check out our Patreon if you want more Keoprints stuff. There's perks, there's discounts at keoprints.com where you can get shirts, hats, or hoodies. Check the link there too, it's good stuff. Bye.